guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours or so. So much news and so much important news as well. Firstly, new manager search. We've gotten the rumors back after a month of a hiatus and Barcelona's top three current managers to replace Xavi are Luis Enrique, Hansi Flick, and Rafa Marquez with Thomas Tuchel. Julian Nagelsmann, Mikel Arteta, and Roberto De Zerbi ruled out as options. Again, the club are begging. They're on their knees for Chai to stay, but Chai remains firm that he will lead the club at the end of the season. We'll give you guys all the manager updates in that regards. Transfer updates as well. We've been linked with Holland and Neymar. We'll talk about that, but mainly Nico Williams. The club really likes Nico Williams, and they're ready to pay. His 50 million year release clause, they just had to return to the 1 1 rule first in La Liga. Deco in the club, big fan of Nico Williams, and he has, of course, a lot of friends at Barcelona. But the big question will be to sign Nico Williams for 50 million or Estavio William Messino for 50 million euros. But the biggest news around Barcelona has been about the overhaul in the center back department. We have updates on every single center back's future. We have eight or nine center backs coming to the first team this summer, and the club need to axe three or four of them. Indigo Martinez, he's gone. Eric Garcia, he's gone. Clement Longley, he's gone. Chad Riyad, who remember we were going to buy about two months ago, he's gone. The club are making big decisions. And finally, Nike and Puma's offers have finally been put on the table for Barcelona. Puma's offer is absolutely beautiful. And Nike's offer is nothing short of pathetic. We'll talk about that and when the decision will be coming. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very, very, very much appreciated. And also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Now, before we get into the video, guys, this video is sponsored by Go Jersey. Go Jersey is your best spot to go for cheap and high quality football jerseys or anything football in general they got scarves they've got flags retro kits regular kits track suit from multiple different leagues mls premier league la liga the argentinian league the scottish league air divisi they've got everything for you they actually sent me some of their products they sent me firstly the 2015 away kit which by the way looks absolutely stunning quality absolutely elite as well to the minute detail this season's away kit the white one with the 1970s badge long sleeve as well and finally this beautiful tank top which i don't think barcelona sell but they had a custom made absolutely fantastic quality is elite and if you go to the checkout and put the code boy B O Y, you get 10% off your order. What more can you ask for? So hit the link, top link in the description down below. Go to gojersey.com, use the discount code BOY at checkout, and get 10% off your order and get your new football merchandise today. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 48 hours or so. Firstly, we have been linked with a few midfielders, one of them being Jorginho. Of Arsenal, a sport came out saying that Joao Santos, the agent of Jorginho, has stated that Jorginho would be delighted to play in La Liga, specifically for Barcelona. Deco, who admires the player, finds him a more of an interesting option for the club, given that he will be a free agent this summer. I don't... Very much the profile of Frankie de Jong in the sense of the pivot. I think Jorginho can play the pivot better than Frankie, but... I think Jorginho is someone who needs someone alongside him to kind of be the regista, kind of be someone that controls the tempo, doesn't have to worry about the work rate defensively. If you look at the Jorginho's best time in Italy, best time with Chelsea as well, there's always been a proper pivot beside him, whether it was in Golo Conte for France, or I forget who it was for uh, Italy in the year, but there's always been someone beside him. So don't mind it per se, but that for me, if you bring in Jorginho, it means that you're going to cancel out Christensen. I'd rather have Christensen as part of the squad, whether it's going to be in the pivot or center back, than have Jorginho. Again, he's coming uh, you know, to the end of his career as well, age-wise. So I'd stay clear of it unless he is the only option we've got. If we don't get Onana, we can't get Kimmich, we don't get Zubamendi, we don't get Mass Pfeiffer, it's Jorginho or nothing, I will take it. But hopefully we won't come down to that point. So I would stay clear of him. Another option in the pivot as well is Lobotka of Napoli. He's come out with some quotes following the reports about Xavi saying he's a really good player. And his agent saying that he's spoken to Xavi. He said that it's a pleasure that your childhood idol Xavi praises you on how you play. It gives me the energy to continue working. But right now I'm only thinking about Naples and we'll see what happens in the summer. 
there is no way we're signing Lobotka. <laughs> Even if Xavi stays, I don't see it in any capacity whatsoever. It's not really a move I'm too keen on either. I would stay clear, not really the profile or the age that I'll be looking for in the midfield as well. A good player, but I don't think there is anything in it. And he has a contract with Napoli until 2027 as well. They're losing Zielinski this summer, one of their better midfielders. So there is no way that Napoli are going to let him go for cheap as well. So I would not pay money for him. He was a free option. Maybe there could be something in it, but I don't see anything in this as well. So we'll wait and see in the midfield. But again, in regards to these two options in the Lavodka and Jorginho, I see them both as very unlikely as things currently stand. Now, one of the craziest rumors recently has been linking Neymar yet again on a return to Barcelona. I am, if I had, if I could get a dollar every time I've seen a link that Neymar was going to come back to Barcelona, I would genuinely be a millionaire. But following these weird reports, it's been shut down multiple times. I think Barca Times on Twitter came out saying that contrary reports, there is zero chance that Neymar can return to Barcelona this summer. He will continue in Saudi Arabia next season. Total denial according to several sources close to his camp. And following this report, for Bitser Monaco confirmed that as well, saying that despite the rumors from the last 24 to 40 hours, there have been no discussions, no contacts for Neymar to return to Barcelona in the summer. It ain't gonna happen. Although we do need a left winger. But off the back of an ACL injury as well, his age... And of course, him being Neymar, I personally would say clear. Now, another big player that I think has a better chance of joining Barcelona in the future is Erling Holland. And his father, Alfie Holland, was spotted at a very famous restaurant in Barcelona, El Nacional de Pasión de Garcia. Now, why he was there, I don't know. Uh, I think uh, Rafael Uste denied to the media that he met with er with El Erling Holland's father. I think he was asked, I think, after... Um, training session or something did you meet with early holland's dad he said no no no, i didn't meet with early holland's dad so he was in barcelona he could be in barcelona for many of reasons but again the rumors are starting to build up with early holland so keep your eyes on him in the future but for now uh, it's not going to be anything that develops over this summer and of course neymar definitely not coming back to barcelona i think personally ever but a forward signing that I believe this summer could definitely revolutionize Barcelona is the signing of a top left winger. And that top left winger could be Nico Williams of Atleti Club. Tony Juan Marti from Sport has come out saying that Barcelona does not forget about Nico Williams. He remains high on the agenda in case Barcelona are able to make a move for him this summer transfer window. He is popular due to his profile and because he can play on the left wing. He has a release clause of 50 million euros which is attainable for Barcelona but not right now until we return to the 1-1 rule at least. Nico would be excited about joining Barcelona. He also has several good friends with Barcelona but he would never force a move away from Athletic Club. Here's the big question ladies and gentlemen. Do you spend 50 million on Nico Williams or do you spend 50 million on Estavio Willian also of course known as Messino? That is the big question. I did a poll on Twitter and it was split 50-50, so no one helped me with my decision. I think Nico Williams being able to play at left wing definitely, definitely helps build his case. He's Spanish, he knows the league, he knows a lot of the players already, so in terms of adaptation, there'll be little to none. My only quorum with Nico Williams is that he was free about four months ago, so now we're paying $50 million for someone who we could have gotten for free uh, in November or December, which would, be, which would be a bit annoying in my opinion, but look, I rate Nico Williams highly, and to be honest, I'd rather sign him than face him twice every single season uh, for the next 10 years, if I'm being completely honest. So, it's a player that I really, really like. And if we sign him or uh, Messino, I wouldn't mind either of them. Of course, Messino, very young. There's a bit of a risk factor there as well. But he's doing unbelievable things in Brazil. Of course, Nico Williams, you know how he, can, how he does in Spain. He's shown it. He's produced it for Spain and for Athletic Club as well. So, it would be a fantastic, fantastic move. We signed Nico Williams for $50 million and a proper pivot for 50 60 million it's been 100 million overall in the summer 110 and we're absolutely cooking next season this would be a generational signing but again no real movements Barcelona just like the player and if they can sign him they will maybe try their best to do so uh, this summer so keep your eyes on that but no doubt Barcelona are in the market for left winger this summer and they have Nico Williams very very high on their list let's now discuss the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 48 hours or so first one up Marcus Alonso pretty standard here 21 Marti is reporting that Marcus Alonso's future is far away from Barcelona again there is absolutely no chance that Barcelona renew his contract I think even if Xavi stays it's a very very unlikely factor and we've known this now for a very very long time little to no activity this season even before his back injury and the fact that he got this back injury and we didn't miss him and now he's coming back and we're still not looking forward to his return 
says enough to you about Marcus Alonso. So he will leave this summer, I think, on a free transfer, of course, when his contract expires at Barcelona. And I honestly think there's a good chance he might go to Atletico Madrid as well. But we'll wait and see how things turn out. Marcus Alonso definitely on the right track to leave Barcelona this summer. Now, without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest news around Barcelona over the past 48 hours or so has been the news around the center back position at Barcelona. We have so many center backs come June the 30th. We're going to have around eight or nine first team center backs. And of course, we can only have four. So Barcelona going to have to make some key decisions. And we have an update on every single center backs potential situation right now at Barcelona. This is coming in from Luis Rojo from Marca, who is quite reliable. He's come out saying that Barcelona will have eight center backs next season, all of whom who are open to exits except for Pau Cubarsi. Pau Cubarsi is a key and important player for the future of Barcelona, and Barcelona has no plans on selling him and intend to renew his contract as soon as possible. Following on Cubarsi, we do have some more news on his renewal. Fabrizio Romano has come out saying that Barcelona have already sent a renewal offer to Paul Cubarsi, it's a long-term deal with a salary increase, which will also include a 1 billion year release clause for when he turns 18, I believe, and Barcelona hope to get it done before the end of the season. So the renewal offer for Cubarsi is on the table, and we'll wait and see how things turn out in that regard. Now back to the original report. We have up done every single summer center back, like I mentioned. Andreas Christensen benefits the team with his versatility, but selling him would be a profitable deal. For Barcelona, so again, Barcelona happy to keep Christensen, but again, selling him would be so beneficial for FFP because, of course, he came for free, so that's something to keep out for as well. On Kunde, Barcelona has no intentions of selling Kunde due to his market value, but his exit is not ruled out because, again, Kunde's market value right now around 60 million. There is no way on God's green earth we should be selling Jules Kunde. His professionalism and his ability on the pitch should not be getting rid of him whatsoever, both at right back and at center back as well. Definitely keep him. On Arujo, Arujo is also another important player for the future of Barcelona, but Bayern May's tempting offer and his contract uh, not being renewed quite yet is in the air, and Barcelona is not quite certain about his future. Now, on Arujo's future, Ferran Corras from Sport has come out saying that Bayern Munich have renewed their interest in Arujo, but the player is thinking only of Barcelona and clearly wants to stay. Talks began with his camp to renew his contract a few weeks ago. During the negotiations for Arujo's last contract renewal back in, I think, 2021, Matteo Eliman promised the player's agent that the club would increase his salary as soon as possible, and Barcelona think now is the right time to do so. Both the president and Deco believe that Barcelona have to make an economic effort to increase Arujo salary they want the player to stay at the club for many years so Barcelona ready and willing to chuck money at Arujo I can see why his defensive ability is second to none in the world of football again the passing is not really up to scratch in terms of Barcelona standard but he's just such an elite defender with the pace the ability and the ground duels aerial duels as well third captain of the club he will be the club captain I would say in about two or three years time. I expect Roberto to leave in the next year or so, hopefully this summer. I expect the second to leave in the next two or three years as well. So he's going to be the captain of this team, especially come the new stadium. When the stadium Spotify to cap now, the new Spotify cap now is 100% done in 2026. We, might, we genuinely might be walking into that season with Aruho as the captain of the club. So of course, the club really want to keep him. But again, renewal not quite done yet, but again, on the right track. Now, Barcelona does not count on Eric Garcia and Clement Longley for next season. Both players are expected to lead the club this summer following the returns from their loans. We actually have some quotes here from Eric Garcia, who spoke to Raccoon about his future. And he said, I have a contract with Barcelona and I have to return once the season ends. What is 100% certain that as I will return to Barcelona, then once I'm there, I will see what happens. On the competition in the team of Barcelona, competition makes everyone better. And in the summer, it did have a, uh, I did have a personal need to go out to play every week to be able to enjoy playing day by day again once i return to barcelona i know what the their center bats are going to be doing very well but i'm also doing very well with what i'm doing with girona so eric garcia very confident of coming back to the barcelona and there might be a reason behind that now again the report says that barcelona does not count currently on Eric Garcia and of course come along late which is pretty standard quickly on Chad Riyad he does but Barcelona of course have a buyback option remember back in January the big news oh Barcelona's gonna bring back Chad Riyad sell one of their center backs either Kunde, Christensen maybe Arujo now that's completely out the window because they won't trigger that option due to the financial problem and also the debt that we currently have 
at center back. So pretty much with the emergence of Parku Barsi, we don't need Chadri Yad back whatsoever. So again, like I said at the time, like I'll say now, I don't think Barcelona will trigger their option to buy Chadri Yad. I think Betis will trigger their option to buy him. I don't think Barcelona will trigger their buyback option. By the way, Chadri Yad, I rate him highly. Good center back. Might come back to Barcelona in the future, but for now, I see very unlikely. But the big question around these center backs is Inigo Martinez. Luis Rojo from Market came out saying that Barcelona may be forced to sell Inigo Martinez this summer as they fail to register him in La Liga. Barcelona may be forced to sell Inigo Martinez if they fail to register him in La Liga for next season. Now, of course, Inigo Martinez last summer signed a two-year deal at Barcelona, but Barcelona only registered one year this year, this season, with La Liga. So his season, his contract for next season is not registered with La Liga, which means that we had to find room for FFP salary margin to re-register him. Now, following that stipulation, Tony Juan Marti has come out saying that Barcelona is now working towards the next season, thinking about the departure of Inigo Martinez. Not because of any sporting issue, but because of team management. The team has several top-level center backs. His departure also is seen as an option to lighten the low wage bill. Barcelona will help find him a new club. Looks like Indigo Martinez will be sacrificed, and I think overall that is the correct decision. We're hearing reports that Mikel Fey might get his spot in the first team because he's left-footed. I think the one big, you know, uh, pro, so to speak, or con, con, the one negative part of losing Indigo Martinez is having that left footed center back. We've got to have one in the first team. Having all of them being right footed center backs, you did no dynamic in that back line whatsoever. Selling him though makes sense. He has one year left on his deal. He's aging. I think the only reason why people are a bit, you know, disappointed about that is because he's been performing very well this season. I think, especially in that month of October, November, December, he was sensational, absolutely brilliant. I rate Inigo Martinez as a professional, as a leader, as a player as well. But with the current situation at the club, I do understand why the club have decided to sacrifice him, so to speak. So right now, Barcelona's plans for center back next season is to have Koundé, Kirchensen, Arujo, Kubarsi, and either Mikal Fe or Eric Garcia. Now, following this Inigo Martinez exit rumor, Atletico Madrid have shown interest. Relievo have come out saying that Inigo Martinez is happy in Barcelona, but he's also clear that he wants to have a leading role in the squad. Atletico de Madrid is closely monitoring his situation at center back. It cannot be ruled out that Barcelona could use Inigo as a bargaining chip for the Joao Felix operation. Woo Bloody hell. Atletico Madrid, by the way, are looking for center backs. I think they want to have a little bit of an overhaul there. I think the reports in Atletico said they want to get signed two center backs this summer. I think Inigo Martinez would be a brilliant signing for Atletico Madrid. And using him to try and get Joao Felix on a permanent transfer or maybe securing another loan for him would be a sensational move for Barcelona. The only thing I don't like about this is, yet yeah, again, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid doing business. But when you're both in financial situations and you both have players that you, you know, want to have in your squad that can benefit you. You kind of had to bite the bullet in that regard. Now, again, I think Inigo Martinez is gone, especially with the report from Tony Juan Marti. Apparently, if Barcelona cannot register him, they will keep him and they will pay him his salary. And hell, he might even end up leaving Barcelona and, you know, he, we might be paying part of his salary as well. Barcelona have told Inigo Martinez last summer 100% you are going to get paid. Whether you play for Barcelona or be at Barcelona is where the question mark comes about. So it looks like Indigo Martinez will be sacrificed. He will be moving on from Barcelona this summer. I think overall that is the correct decision. And right now Barcelona's plan at center back is to have Arujo, Kubarsi, Kunde, Christensen, and either Mikal Fe or Eric Garcia. Of course, Kunde can play at, at uh, right back as well, so he'll get minutes in both areas. Christensen can play in the pivot as well, so he'll get minutes in both areas. So it'll mainly be Arujo and uh, Kubarsi starting, Kunde, Eric uh, Christensen coming in, in and out. Hopefully provide some coverage and competition. And Mikhail Fayer, Eric Garcia being the other option. That's going to be a really, really interesting one. I think that either one I would take, to be honest. I think I'd probably favor Mikhail Fey because he is left-footed. So again, Kunde right-footed, Christensen right-footed, Kubarsi right-footed, Arujo right-footed, Eric Garcia right-footed, Mikhail Fey left-footed. So I could, I think there's a very good chance that Barcelona sell Eric Garcia and keep Mikhail Fey. What I said in the last video as well, Barcelona had to make a decision, keep Mikhail Fey or sell him. And looking like keep right now could be a genuine option. So wait and see how things turn out. But again, there is going to be a big overhaul in the center back position for Barcelona this summer. And key decisions are already being made. Langlet gone, Chad Riyad gone, Inigo Martinez gone. And one of Mikhail Fey or Eric Garcia will be gone as well. 
Now, not only is there an overhaul for Barcelona in the center back position internally, but also externally, as well as other center backs around the world of football, do have an effect on the future of Barcelona. One of them being Jean Claire Todibo. For Bishop Germano's come out saying that Todibo could really leave Nice this summer and they would let him leave for around 40 million great Kurdish pounds. And of course, Barcelona hold 20% of any future sale and they've been talking about this at Barcelona media a lot apparently Barcelona internally are really looking forward to this money for Tordibo this summer so we'll wait and see if he gets sold if he does get sold as well we're looking to get around five to ten million euros for him which of course would be a big big asset for Barcelona and not only for him but also for Mika Marmo who we did see play last night I think he played very well I think he's one of the better players for Las Palmas and again Sport came out saying that Barcelona keeping an eye on former La Masia graduate Mika Marmo the Catalonian center back from Las Palmas visited the Monge week of course and he played well the club will get 50% of the money for any future sale Girona are you know interested in him of course, I think Man City are interested in him as well a lot of clubs really looking at Las Palmas as center back Marmo I think Atletico Madrid are also keen as well so keep your eyes on him if Las Palmas sell him for any fee whatsoever we get 50% so 50% from Mika Marmo 20% from Jean Claude Tadibo again more money in the back pockets of Barcelona now two Barcelona players features right now that are very much unclear is the future of Ansu Fati and Pablo Torre both currently out on loan. Firstly on Ansu Fati, Sport of Kamal saying is becoming increasingly likely that Ansu Fati will stay at Brighton next season, especially if Roberto De Zerbi stays as the Brighton manager. The manager trusts the player a lot and is certain that he can recover Ansu Fati's best version. I think there is a high, high chance that if De Zerbi does stay as a Brighton manager, Ansu Fati will be loaned back again to Brighton. Again, an agreement will be found out between the two clubs. If De Zerbi does not stay though, I have no idea. He could be part of the first team. We could end up selling him or loaning him again. I think right now the club's plan is to loan Ansu Fati again this summer. But one player that we have no idea what's going on with is Pablo Torre. Sport of Kamal saying the club death of Pablo Torre will be part of the first team next season. The idea is to loan him out again or sell him with a buyback option. So again, Pablo Torre with the emergence of other midfielders with Fermin Lopez coming in. He has no room now at Barcelona. We invested 20 million euros and Pablo Torre as well. Do not forget that. I think he's a brilliant player. He kind of reminds me a lot of Ricky Puch in the sense that a lot of the fans rate him, the club rate him, but he's just not getting any minutes whatsoever with either Girona or Barcelona. I think a look, a, I think either a loan or a buy, or we sell him with a buyback option. That's going to be one of the main options. I don't think there's any room for him in the first team. I think right now we're pretty much betting on Fermin Lopez in that kind of that you know position. I really rate Pablo Torre as well, but I think it's another player that yet yeah, again who Barcelona trusted, invested in, but other you know internal talents came in and overtook him unfortunately which kind of sucks but his future is definitely one to watch as well again investing 20 million in a player like this you want to see some sort of an outcome either profit wise in the sale or on the pitch so that's going to be a very very interesting one to watch out for his future i personally think that barcelona will end up of course loaning him again or selling him with a buyback or percent of a future sale whatever the case may be and with the his future most likely i think another loan if he's not loaned i think there is a higher chance that we do sell him than keep him as part of the first team as things currently stands. So we want to see what happens in these two players' future, but right now they're both very far away from the first team. Now players are expected to stay at Barcelona for the foreseeable future. Two big players in regards to Barcelona's Gala 11, one of them being Rafinha. Barca Times on Twitter has come out saying that big agents have contacted Rafinha's camp on behalf of interest from Premier League sides. As of today, the player has no intentions of leaving Barcelona. Again, with him not having an agent as well, it's going to benefit the player himself making his own decision. But again, Premier League clubs, Saudi clubs have all approached Rafinha and he said no because he wants to have his future at Barcelona. Same goes for Robert Lewandowski as well. Plenty goal in Sky Germany has come out saying that Saudi Arabia and European clubs, including Atletico Madrid, are interested in Lewandowski. However, he wants to stay at Barcelona and has no plans of a transfer as things currently stand. So that Atletico Madrid interest, keep an eye on that. I think that could definitely intensify once we hit May and June. But again, that big Saudi offer, 100 million salary, has been rejected by Robert Lewandowski and he sees his future at Barcelona alongside on the right wing, Rafinha. Now we do have one very quick contract renewal update apart of course from the Aruha and Kuburse one which I talked about in the center back overhaul section. Hector Ford, we have an update on his contract. Matea Marito has come out saying that negotiations are ongoing right now between Barcelona and Hector Ford on a new deal. Talks around the player's role at the club in the future and the plan going forward. More means needed to detail out the, you know, sort out the details but winning this from all parties to get this over the line. So Barcelona are in negotiations with Hector Ford's camp also with uh, Mark Guiu 
as well, but with Hector Ford specifically, talking about his future plan at the club, what is the plan moving forward, his role as well, all that being discussed, which I think, again, there will be an agreement that will be reached very, very confident about that, alongside Mark Guayu as well. Again, the club really focusing on Kubarsi, Fort, and Guayu's renewals as things currently stand, then probably shifting their focus to Aruha once we get closer to the summer and we know who the first team manager is as well. But for Hector Ford, renewal is on the right track, but again, not done quite yet. Let's now discuss some of the injury updates around the first team at Barcelona. We have one big update on the two main players in the midfield of Barcelona in Pedri and Frecky de Jong. According to Fernando Polo from Mundo Portivo and also Tony Juan Marti of Sport, Barcelona expect and trust that Frecky de Jong and Pedri will be ready for the first leg against PSG. I'm pretty confident that Frecky de Jong is going to come back. Of course, now we have 10 days without a game. The next game will be against PhD. So I'm hoping Frankie Dion will be back in training in the next two or three training sessions. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I don't think Pedro will be back until minimum Classico. I think Classico I'm talking about, he'll be in, he'll be in the squad list, probably won't even come off the bench. You know, I think that's going to be the best case scenario for Pedri. I don't think he'll be back personally, in my opinion, for PSG. But although the reports are suggesting that he might be back for PSG, again, if he can be back for PSG, sensational. Again, back with that game, play both of them against Cadez, get some minutes, play the second leg of PSG, you're fully fit, ready to go for the El Clasico near the end of this month. So, big, big boost for Barcelona. I think with Frankie de Jong, everything's well on track. But with Pedri, everything's going faster than expected. So, major caution needed there. Let's now discuss some of the news starting in Barcelona over the past 48 hours or so. Some big news in regards to the Mendy Amal's participation this summer with Spain. Alex Pentel from Relievos come out saying the RFEF is considering calling the Mendy Amal up for both the Euros and the Olympics. Santi Dena, the Spanish under 21 coach, will have complete freedom in choosing his squad. The alarms have been sounded a lot at Barcelona and they have already begun negotiating with the Federation and there is concern of excess minutes will affect the progression of the Man Yamal, but the final decision will be agreed upon with the player. So the law in Spain is that if you're called up, you legally have to go, is what I've been seeing, what I've been reading. So again, with, with for me, I don't mind the Man Yamal being called up for both. My question is the minutes. If he's starting for Spain at the Euros, he should not be going to the Olympics. If he's on the bench for the Euros, maybe comes on a one game or two, goes to the Olympic. That's honestly, if I'm being, you know, fair, that's fine by me. But if he's starting week in, week out for Spain in the Euros and they get knocked down, then he goes to starts. Because he's 100% sorry for the Olympics. Whether he starts for Spain or not in the Euros is where the question mark comes about. That's for me is a big question. And Barcelona are worried about this. Of course, they saw this with Pedri back in 2021. Although Spain claimed that it's not their fault. They had a big factor. He played every single second, every single game for Spain. One of the best under-21 uh, player in, in the Euros as well. Went to the Olympics with all the way up to the final. Lost the final. Got silver. Way too many minutes for him, and Barcelona are very cautious with Lemany Mal, also with Paul Cobarsi as well. What we saw with Paul Cobarsi right now, he's not quite a starter for Spain, especially during the last international break. I think he only played about 10 minutes, and that was it. But Lemany Mal is the big worry for Barcelona, and they're now negotiating with the Spanish Federation to make sure that Lemany Mal does not have an excess amount of minutes this summer. Now, we also have some big news in regards to the kit for the foreseeable future at Barcelona, the kit manufacturer. And it looks like it is a two-horse race right now between Nike and Puma. Both offers are on the table and both offers have been leaked by Mundo Deportivo. They've come out saying that Puma's offer for Barcelona is 100 million euros per year, which could increase to 120 million euros if a certain number of shirts are sold. They're also offering an 100 million euro signing bonus premium, whatever the case may be. The offer is for 10 years. Barcelona are currently only getting 66 million euros per year from Nike, and they've increased their offer to 75 million euros. Barcelona's current contract with Nike is until 2026, which can be extended until 2028. There's an option, of course, if both parties can agree. The club's dispute with Nike is currently in court, and depending on what the court decides, the contract could be terminated in 2025. First off, what an absolutely pathetic offer from Nike. 75 million when City are getting paid over 100. Bayern are getting over 100. Real Madrid are getting over 100. Man United are getting over 100. They're offering us 75 million as a net, as a as a guaranteed basis, and we're currently getting 66. This is why the club are in this situation, and I cannot praise Laporta more that dealing with this situation. We are getting nothing but turned over, slapped right in the arse by Nike. Puma's offer. That is some top tier. Again, that 100 million fix, of course, can raise to 120 million if certain numbers and achievements are uh, achieved based on shirt sales, not, you know, trophies and stuff for the Barcelona first team. And you also get 
100 million sign on bonus just for signing the deal as well. Nike, it was nice knowing you. Get me that Puma deal ASAP. Unless Nike can match that, uh, besides on the sign on bonus, of course. If they can give us 100 million uh, per year, that would definitely you know bring a question mark from Barcelona. But again, next season, we're on course to have Nike. Um, the contract termination will probably kick in until 2025. Again, Barcelona trying to terminate their contract with Nike without paying the fee. I think the fee to terminate the contract is like 300 million or something like that. So they're trying to break the contract without doing that. That's why they're currently in court. But again, a decision is imminent. Fran Corazon Sport came out saying in the next 10 to 15 days, Barcelona has a final meeting with Nike. If the offer from the brand is not good enough, the club will make a final decision. Now, this came out a few days ago, so probably I would say another seven to nine days or so, the club will have a meeting with Nike. If they can match the offer of Puma, things might change. If they cannot, things are going to change. So those are the offers on the table. Of course, Puma's considerably better. Nike's offer, quite honestly, nothing short of absolutely embarrassing, and the club will make the decision very, very soon. Now, the most craziest news that's come out around Barcelona recently has been about Barcelona. Now, the most craziest news around Barcelona recently has been that Xavi has sued two journalists in the Catalonia media. I forget what the other guy's name. He's kind of an irrelevant guy. He's talking about talked about how Xavi um, used this one word that Xavi didn't like, so Xavi is suing him. But also, he's suing bloody Javi Miguel from AES. Luis Rojo Marca came out saying that Xavi has sued journalist Javi Miguel for a report published by him stating that the coach had forced the members of his staff to put their mobile phones on the table to check who was leaking news. This is absolutely false according to Xavi and Javi Miguel now has a deadline to ratify his information. If he does not do so, the lawsuit will continue. Now keep in mind Javi Miguel and Xavi were close I guess now they're not close since Xavi is bloody suing him. And again, I talked about this report in an exclusive video I did with Ghost TV. Go check out the community tab. Scroll down to about two weeks ago. I did a uh, video on that report that apparently uh, Xavi wanted to figure out who was leaking news to the media. So he asked all the players, the coaching staff, to bring their phones. Uh, apparently this is all false from Xavi. He also confirmed this pre-match before the um, Las Palmas game. Yeah, he's true that he's that he's suing Javi Miguel, and for this reason as well. This is why you cannot lie in the media unless you have good information. Maybe Javi Miguel might come out and say, "Here's your information. This is where I got it from." And you know, he he might come out on top of Javi Miguel. You never know. But we'll wait and see how things turn out. But again, Barcelona and also Xavi really cracking down on the false news in the media by suing journalists in Barcelona. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is in regards to Barcelona's new search for a manager as the reports have intensified a lot recently all of a sudden which for me kind of hit me out of absolutely nowhere now this is coming in from Fernando Polo from Unoportivo he's come out saying that Barcelona have two main candidates to replace Xavi next season the difficult option is Luis Enrique and the easier option is Hansi Flick in the case Barcelona cannot sign Luis uh, Enrique or Hansi Flick to replace Xavi Rafa Marquez is the third option to take over the first team. Rafa Marquez has less of an option to take over the first team right now because of his betting website ads, which have angered certain important board members internally. We talked about this about a month ago, but we've got to get on our knees and uh, be, uh, we got to get on our knees and beg Chavi to stay. I mean, Hansi Flick and Rafa. I don't mind losing Enrique. That for me is you know good level of Chavi. You can even argue an upgrade. Hansi Flick and Rafa Marquez. Oh my, oh my God! You're probably thinking what's happening with the other targets. Well, we have the answers. Barcelona have discarded four other managers to replace Xavi for the following reason. De Zerbi, ruled out because he's never managed a big club. Arteta, ruled out because of a long-term contract with Arsenal. Tuchel is irregular and has an unpredictable character. What? And fourth, Nagelsmann, because he lacks experience. How is managing Hoffenheim, RB Leipzig, Bayern Munich, and the German national team lacking experience? I get the De Zerbi one. Tuchel cool one doesn't really make sense. Arteta has a long contract at Arsenal. He has the same amount of contracts, uh, years left on his deal with Arsenal that Luis Enrique has with PSG. Make that make sense. Tuchel cool because he's a bit angry on the touchline. Who cares? Listen. <sighs> We've got to get... We're, we're at a point now where we got a big Chavi to stay. I mean, even uh, Rafael Luce came out for the game yesterday saying that we're going to have to start begging Chavi to stay. The reports have been like this as well. Mundo Portivo came out saying that as of right now, Chavi's idea is still to leave Barcelona at the end of the season. Only win La Liga or the Champions League would change his mind. Both Chavi and Laporta think Barcelona have options to win La Liga or the Champions League this season. But Chavi will decide his future after El Clasico, according to Sport. And Laporta is in favor of him continuing, but everything will depend on the results until then. 
The club are playing with absolute fire here, but even San Antonio of Sport came out saying that Xavi is still determined to leave despite the club wanting him to stay for the final year of his contract. He has no plans to change his mind since announcing his departure. Xavi came out in the pre-match press conference, of course, before Las Palmas, saying that I've always told them that I'm very grateful for them, myself and my crew as well. There's a good relationship and I trust uh, that there's a good trust and friendship there. I think nothing has changed, but the key word is gratitude. So again, Xavi is saying that, look, I ain't staying. And the club are like at this point where they're begging Chavi to stay. Look at these options, man. None of these options are on the level or better than Chavi. They're all downgrades in my opinion. I think the Zerbi is a downgrade. Arteta, you could argue same level. I think Tuco as of right now is a bit of a downgrade. Nogglesman for me, definitely an upgrade. Rafa Marquez, downgrade. Hansi Flick, downgrade. Luis Enrique on the same level. Luis Enrique and Nogglesman should be the two main options in my opinion. If we can get Luis Enrique out of PSG, then I think you can get Arteta out of Arsenal and he should be number three on my list. I'd go Luis Enrique, Nagelsmann, top two, either one I'll take and then third one being Arteta. The club cannot wait much longer. The, there are so many, with Chabi Alonso now staying at Bayern Leverkusen, so many top clubs need a manager. Liverpool need one, Bayern Munich need one, Barcelona need one, you might see another club sack their manager, what happens to Chelsea uh, sacks Tuchel, what happens to the United sacks uh, Eric Ten Hag. So many opens are coming out for a manager and the club need to make a decision. I'm in favor of Chavi staying. I'd rather Chavi stay than bring in anyone else, especially for one year. Since clubs that have a sabbatical, you can bring in Klopp maybe next summer. But the thing, uh, the thing is, again, if Nagelsmann leaves Germany, Germany going to be eyeing up Klopp and the German national team job might, you know, favor Klopp over the Barcelona job as well. So the club have to make a very, very crucial decision on the new manager very soon. I think Chavi staying would be fantastic, but he's not going to decide till the end of the season. You cannot wait until May to not have a coach transfer targets preseason uh, training prep as well. Huge, huge, huge decision from Barcelona and Xavi that they have to decide very soon. But as things currently stand, the top three to replace Xavi are Hansi Flick, Luis Enrique, and Rafa Marquez. Apart from Luis Enrique, may God have mercy on our souls. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours or so. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to first of course is on the manager's list. Bloody hell, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Secondly, on Nico Williams, would you pay the money for him? Would you sign him this summer? Would you still pay for him even though he was free a few months ago? And let me know what side you're on. Nico Williams for 50 million or Stavia William Messino for 50 million. Thirdly, your thoughts on the center back overhaul. Who would be your four slash five center backs for Barcelona next season? And finally, your thoughts on the Nike Puma decision. Who would you side with and why? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and force the Barca. Oh, I'm gonna go.